as the armored offensive by the Royal Daimar army ground on, clawing its way closer and closer to retaking the Palmyra oil fields. Tensions in the east were growing closer and closer to a boiling point as the war entered its seventh day. The entire Near East teetered on the edge of being plunged into the war between Daimar and Paran. Last night, around 0200 hours, the MV Salhad, a super tanker sailing under the flag of the Commonwealth of the Trucial States, was boarded and seized by paramilitary forces of the Islamic Emirates of Persia. The ship is being held off the small Gulf island of Greater Tomb and its cargo offloaded into POL storage tanks for transfer to the mainland and eventual sale by the Islamic Emirates to reduce the pain of the international sanctions levied against the rogue nation. In the late 19th century, from 1885 to 1903, many emirs and sultans of the Arabian Peninsula, after having to rule their various city-states and sultanates under Ottoman tutelage, and then with the interference of the British as the Raj spread westward to the Persian Gulf, banded the last of their armies together to move north across the Great Gulf and into the land known as Persia, with many of the Sunni emirs and sultans adopting the ways of Shiite Islam as a method of gaining power in their newfound land. The invading emirs were surprised to have found many on the coast of the Gulf particularly in the teeming port cities of Bandar Abbas and Kish Island, were very unhappy with the rule of the Shahs from their seat of power far to the north across the tall mountains in Tehran. The discontent with the Shahs in the north, so removed from the port cities of the south, made the ranks of the Emir's armies swell. And in 1905, a rebellion was launched from within Persia, and the armies swept through the countryside growing ever larger as it marched towards the gates of Tehran. The Shah and his family abdicated his throne in December of 1906 and traveled first to the British Raj, where an attempt was made to control Persia from exile. When this was shown to be futile, the Shah brought his family to the United Kingdom, where they were honored as guests by the British monarchy. This Shah and his family would be installed as the Shah of the Kingdom of Daimar by the British following the First World War and the dissolution of the Ottoman Empire, while a bitter and Islamist younger brother of the Shah was installed as the Sultan of the Empire of Paran by the French. Following the Shah's departure from Persia, a new nation created by the Emirs of Arabia was created, with each Emir being granted his own state within the state with the capital of the new nation located in Shiraz, a place where the emirs could meet and discuss and sometimes fight about what was best for their new confederation of small sultanates, with a single emir becoming head of state every six years after a vote was held in Shiraz. Following the Second World War, the West embraced what was at the time called the Emirates of Persia with the nation becoming a massive bulwark against the advance of the Soviet Union and communism into the Persian Gulf, especially as the Soviet Union's hooks clawed ever deeper and deeper into the empire of Tehran. Because of this, the Emirate of Persia, along with its staunch ally, the Kingdom of Daimar, were able to buy the best weapons the West could offer. From various models of the F-4 Phantom II, to the then brand new F-15A Eagle and F-16A Fighting Falcon, to large warships, tanks, and surface-to-air missile batteries. However, with the appointment of the new Emir of Emirs in 1985 from the conservative Emirate of Karman, a wave of Islamist fundamentalism in the style of the Empire of Paran washed across the nation. Western diplomats, expats, military advisors, and many others were held hostage, killed, or deported as a wave of violence washed across the nation. With the complete eradication of Westerners, the new emir declared that he would hold the position for life and renamed the country the Islamic Emirates of Persia and declared the Kingdom of Daimar the Great Satan and vowed that Daimar would one day be cleansed of the infidels, the Shah lets walk freely in the Holy Land in a great jihad.
to the south, across the Strait of Hormuz, with the departure of the various warlords and warring tribes, the various sultans and emirs whose fiefdoms were along the coast of the Arabian Peninsula and who embraced peace and the British and the expansion of the Raj became rich beyond all measures as they became a center of trade between the Far East and the West, with some calling the city of Dubai the Constantinople of the South. With the discovery of oil within their small emirates and another explosion in wealth, the emirs signed an agreement of unity and a treaty with the Raj to become a protectorate of the British until the year 2000, which felt to be an eternity away, and then became the Commonwealth of the Trucial Coast. While the emirs were more than happy enjoying their massive profits, the nation was truly run by British petroleum, from its government to its small military and police forces, and the nation slowly over time shifted into a quasi-democracy with the establishment of a parliament opposite of the Council of Emirs. With the dissolution of the Raj and the British withdrawal of armed forces east of the Suez Canal, the Trucial Coast became a de facto independent nation, with a small native Arab population in its seats of wealth while expat British, South African, and Australian men and women ran the nation and armed forces, while developing more and more of an attachment to their small but growing nation and identity. Since the start of the new war only seven days ago now, the Islamic Emirates of Persia have been making its usual threats and saber rattling as it tries to bully its small neighbor across the straits into turning its back on the Kingdom of Daimar. Simultaneously on the other side, the Shah of Daimar has been pressuring the Trucial coast into boarding and inspecting shipping suspected of carrying weapons through the Strait of Hormuz into Paran. These tensions came to a head last night with the seizure of the MV Salhad and the theft of the oil earmarked for Japan. The Trucial Coast government, flustered by this sudden theft and provocation, sent a flurry of communication traffic to British Petroleum and the Lloyds of London Insurance Company in an attempt to save as much profit as possible from the loss of the ship. After a few short hours of deliberation with Lloyds of London, the British and Trucial Coast Prime Ministers, the American President, the Shah of Daimar and BP, an agreement is struck for the covert sinking of the hijacked tanker and destruction of its crude oiled cargo. Both the heads of state of the US and UK agree that if Lloyds of London pays out to the Trucial Coast, the infamous insurance company will be made whole by British and American taxpayers. As soon as the deal is finalized, the planners at the headquarters of the Trucial Coast Air Force and representatives of the Royal Daimar Air Force's 1st Special Operations Squadron got to work. The operation is named Operation Burning Straits to pay tribute to Daimar's struggle against the Pirani invaders. First SOS AH-64D Apache helicopters will be loaded onto the decks of civilian cargo vessels to be covertly transported as close as possible to Siri and Abu Musa Island. The Apache pilots will then destroy the fire control radars of the SAM sites defending the islands and any targets of opportunity that will not cause large casualties. Once the SAM radars are destroyed, the TCAF's AV-8B Harrier II pilots will sink the stolen tanker with laser-guided bombs and destroy any POL storage facilities on the islands. Air cover for the operation will be provided by TCAF Mirage F-1s and 1st SOS mercenary pilots flying F-A-18As. 1st SOS pilots will also be flying F-16As in strike cap in the event that new targets are spotted or any of the primary targets are unable to be destroyed by either the Apaches or the Harrier pilots. All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and get started here. As you guys all know, I am Colonel Spud of the Trucial Coast Air Force. And big thanks to everyone for coming on in last minute in the middle of the night here. Um, we've got an ongoing and developing situation in the Gulf that we're unfortunately gonna need to play a part in. 
And again, big, big thanks to the first SOS guys for coming in last minute. I know a bunch of your American pilots were on leave celebrating the holiday here. Um, so big thanks to you guys for cutting that short because we are definitely going to need you guys tonight. I know we're all pretty darn tired and fatigued at this point uh, coming in at such a early hour of the morning. Um, I see some of you guys have popped some go pills. We also have coffee in the back of the briefing room here. Uh, make sure you guys get all the energy you need into your bodies here. But if you head back to the back of the briefing room, make sure you are paying attention here. Um, see lots of familiar faces here. We all know each other at this point. So uh, we should be able to fly together pretty well with what we, we kind of want to kind of make this briefing pretty short because we need to step out to those jets, get up into the air and get this operation over with before the sun comes up. So uh, we'll get through this pretty quick here, guys. Uh, basically, as you guys all know, I've heard you listening to the BBC on the way on in here. Um, there is a hijacked tanker that is being held off the coast of Greater Tomb Island. Its oil is being stolen and pumped into POL storage tanks on Greater Tomb Island, and we've been tasked with uh, providing a proportional strike against those targets to destroy the oil and destroy the tanker itself. Now, an additional target that we have today to take out is the SAM tracking radars and the tracking radars only on Abu Musa, Siri, Greater Tomb, and Lesser Tomb Islands. Now, we want to have this airstrike to be as limited as possible and have as few casualties as possible. We want to avoid touching off a wider war between the Kingdom of Daimar, the Commonwealth of the Trucial Coast, and the Islamic Emirates of Persia, and of course, the ongoing war with uh, the Empire of Paran. So we want to make sure that we are not causing any additional tensions here. But we do need to respond to the hijacking of our tanker. Whether or not that's a good idea, that's what the politicians have tasked us with, and it's not my job to uh, expound upon whether or not that is a wise decision. So moving on to the actual mission briefing itself here, we've got uh, the situation over you guys already are well up on that or as close to being up on that as we can at the moment. Um, roll call for the first SOS guys from the Royal Daimar Air Force. Uh, make sure you guys are paying attention to this because I don't want you guys to accidentally step to an F-16 when you've been assigned to an F-A-18, etc. Call sign is on that left hand column. Your intraflight frequency for your aux radio is in the middle left. Your aircraft type assigned is in the center. Middle right is your service type and your mission set is on the right hand side. S cap is strike cap, so keep that in mind, guys. Again, our ROE tonight is very, very restrictive. This is a proportional airstrike only. We want to avoid wider combat if possible. Weapons hold, engage only if fired upon. The only targets you are allowed to fire upon without first being engaged by the enemy are the primary targets of the tankers, the POL storage tanks, and the fire control radars of those SAM sites. Flight into the Islamic Emirates of Persia airspace, mainland airspace, is absolutely prohibited. We want to make sure that we are not provoking the enemy, only providing a proportional response to the hijacking of our tanker. Moving on here, Mission Intel, you guys are all very highly versed with this. Um, you guys know what the IEPAF flies and you know their IADS threats as well at this point. I'm sure from flying with, intercepting and talking on the radio with, with the IEPAF for so many years over the Gulf, you probably know a lot of their pilots on a first name basis at this point. So you know that they are a professional crowd and because of this, they are rather confused as to why the tanker was hijacked and why they are now flying a stand, a rotating cap and standing cap over Bondar Lenge and Kish Island. Now, this rotating cap appears to be made of a rotation of F-15s, F-4s, MiG-29s, and F-5s. While they're keeping their MiG-21s on the ground in a five-minute alert status at Kish Island. So uh, we believe that they're probably going to be rather reluctant to engage because of the fact that they are so confused as to what's going on. As you guys know, the Islamic Emirates of Persia, the different services of their armed forces uh, hate each other. They don't talk to each other um, and they are always keeping each other in the dark as to what's actually going on. 
And so because of this, if we believe that if a wider war is kicked off by this operation, a civil war within the Islamic Empire of Persia will probably kick off as well um, due to the massive tensions within the Islamic, em uh, Islamic Emirates of Persia. So keep that in mind, guys. But uh, they're probably going to be rather reluctant to engage. If they do engage you and they do start maneuvering with you, only actually shoot them down if you actually get fired upon with them. They may be putting on a show tonight, they may be trying to push you away from the tanker without actually engaging you with weapons. So play the game back tonight and don't shoot them down unless you actually get shot at. So uh, keep that in mind guys. The Iads threat on the other hand, as you guys know, totally different story. These guys are the cowboys um, out there. They're incredibly unprofessional. Talking to them on the radio sucks. They seem to be pining to shoot us down all the time, even during peacetime. So uh, just be very, very wary of these guys. And that's why we are authorized to take out their tracking radars at their SAM sites on the various islands tonight. The SAM types we're going to be encountering probably going to be SA-8s. SA-2s, SA-3s, IHOCs, SA-11s, and SA-6s, of course. You guys are all very versed with these different SAM types. Moving on here, we've got our communications flow. We've got our primary radio is going to be set to the proper frequency for the mission comms flow plan, while your AUX radio is going to be set for your intraflight frequency on the roll call page. Uh, departure ATC Agency, as you guys all know, it is after hours right now. The towers do not open up until 0700. So as a result of that, we are going to be treating these frequencies as CTAFs, Common Traffic Advisory Frequencies. Make sure you guys are over communicating on these frequencies as opposed to under communicating. We do not want to have anybody run into each other on the taxiways or have a midair or runway incursion while another flight's taking off, all that good stuff. So make sure that we're communicating um, on these frequencies as much as possible. Um, we also want to make sure that we do not recall those tower controllers. Um, as a way of keeping this airstrike as covert and under the radar as possible, and by calling in all of the ATC personnel, more or less, that's gonna something's going to end up on Twitter, something's going to end up on Facebook, uh, somebody's going to call their cousin across the Straits of Hormuz and tell them that they it sucks because they got to go into work, and that's going to you know spread across and it's going to blow the cover of our airstrike here and ruin the element of surprise. So um, we are going to fly with untowered airports tonight. Strike frequency is going to be 305. That's going to be able to allow us to integrate our first SOS pilots as easily and quickly as possible because uh, the Royal Dimar Air Force typically use 305 um, as their strike frequency. Tanker frequencies will be on the next page here and our recovery ATC agencies, just a repeat of what we got up top on this kneeboard card. Cap and tankers, the cap station plan. All aircraft are going to fly cap uh, station uh, point one and two using left hand turns. So we fly between those two points using left hand turns here. Almost all aircraft tonight, except for the helicopters, are going to have to fly um, a hold while the helicopters do their work, taking out the tracking radars of those SAM sites. And uh, flying an actual holding pattern rather than just a wagon wheel is going to save us a lot of gas tonight. Our assigned altitude blocks, Hitman 1 and Hitman 2, are flight levels 180 to 200. Well, as Scorpion 1 and 2 are going to be above us at the blocks between 200 and 240. Valkyrie 2, our Mirage F1 cap, is going to be up there at 240 to 260, whereas Valkyrie 1 is going to be up there at 280 to 300. Um, for our push order code words for the CADIA, that's going to be our helicopter flights. That's going to be our Assassin 7 flight. Uh, your push order to push from your uh, takeoff points on those civilian cargo ships is going to be Catamaran. Uh, the strike code word for the strike to push is going to be Nautilus. Cap is going to be Spinnaker, so if the uh, five minute alert lifts off from Kish Island, you guys are going to have uh, Spinnaker called out on the radio and you'll be able to push in and intercept that uh, uh, MiG-21 alert that just took off. 
if the standing cap around Bandar Lenge or um, Kish Island also decides to engage us, Spinnaker will also be called and cap. You can uh, leave your cap station and intercept those guys. Again, make sure you're paying attention to that very strict ROE tonight. Strike cap. If a target has not been satisfactorily, satisfactorily destroyed, such as a SAM site tracking radar, the POL storage tanks, or the ship itself, we're going to call mainsail over the radio, and you'll be assigned a target to go and hit and drop your Mark 82s on. Uh, tankers will be on station to provide fuel on egress from the target area, as well as ingress from the target area. You all have a tanker that's assigned to you at your cap point. So if you need to top off on gas while the helicopters do their thing, getting closer and sneaking up on the islands, feel free. Or if you need to get some gas on the way home to make sure you get home with plenty of reserve fuel, that is no problem as well. Tanker assignments are down below here, as well as our frequencies, tachyons, altitudes for the tankers, all that good stuff is listed here on the bottom of the page. For instance, Hitman 1, my flight will be on Shell 2 for our tanker. Objectives and game plan. Game plan for tonight, guys. Cap flights are going to establish their orbits at the cap points. Left hand turns, racetrack orbit between waypoints 2 and 3. That's going to be your cap station point 1 and 2. Um, once we're there, we will then push the uh, Assassin 7 with the code word Catamaran. Strike and Strike Cap aircraft will establish their orbits at their left hand turns, uh, racetrack orbit between waypoints 2 and 3. Once everyone's established on station, Catamaran will be called, Assassin 7 will be pushed. Assassin 7 flight will attack and destroy the enemy SAM radars only with AGM 114Ks to be as precise as possible. Please don't lob a whole a bunch of rockets into these SAM sites. Again, we're trying to be as precise and proportional as possible with as few casualties on the other side as possible. I know that we all hate the SAM operators out there and their dicks on the radio, but uh, we got to make sure that we are having as few casualties on the other side as possible guys once radars are destroyed hitman one and two will push on code word nautilus and sink the hijack tanker and destroy the pol storage on greater tomb island um keep in mind guys that the tanker itself is in rather shallow water so we'll probably sink him with our gbu 16s and they'll probably settle on the bottom we want to make sure that we destroy this ship as much as possible so that it can't be just refloated and then put into the tanker fleet of the islamic uh, emirates of persia uh, navy here so that way we can make sure that uh, it's not going to be used again which may mean that we need to have um, our scorpion flights come in drop a whole stick of mark 82 on the ship to just break it up as much as possible so uh, scorpion definitely be on the lookout for that uh, you may be assigned that target um, strike and cap flights will be pushed to any of the targets that cannot be hit by assassin or hitman flights again uh, not a big deal we already talked about that um, and then everyone's gonna head home on their egress assignments so uh, Valkyrie as well as Scorpion flights will be post strike and then of course Hitman 1 and 2 will be shotgun will be aggressing them and Assassin 7 as required uh, most likely once you have your targets taken out you can just get, go ahead and head on back and get out of the area as much as possible so that way we don't have any MiGs come after you guys um, for myself and my flight Hitman 1, we won't need to make sure that we get good BDA on the tanker as well as the POL storage, so we may stick around a little bit longer after shotgun to make sure that we get good BDA on the POL storage as well as the tanker, and we may need to be able to call in Scorpion 2 or Scorpion 1 onto those two targets, so we'll probably stick around a little bit more, so just keep that in mind, guys. Bullseye is going to be Greater Tomb Island. Uh, we've got coordinates here for that. We've got coordinates for Greater Tomb SA-2 site. That's going to be the target for Assassin 7-1. Lesser Tomb SA-3 site will be the target of Assassin 7-2. Abu Musa IHOC site is going to be the target of Assassin 7-3. The Siri Island SA-6 site will be the target of Assassin 7-4. Hijack Tanker, that's my flight's target, Hitman 1, and POL Storage is for Hitman 2. Weather report out of um, 
Uh, Al Dafra Air Force Base is pretty good. Uh, it's 230 at 10 for the win. 10 statute miles, sky's clear. Uh, it is 10 degrees Celsius, a dew point of negative 5 degrees Celsius. Altimeter is 3003. Runways in use is going to be Sasol and the Keel. It's going to be runway 16. All Batine is going to be runway 13. And All Dafra will be runway 13 right and left. Uh, for a uh, my flights coming out of Sasol the Keel today, we're going to need to make sure we make a quick left hand turn coming off the runway so that way we don't interfere with aircraft coming off of all the team. These two airfields are pretty darn close together and the runways do converge pretty quickly off the departure end. So we'll just be careful of that today. Um, also note, we're going to have a little bit of a tailwind on the takeoff, a little bit of a crosswind as well. So just keep that in mind, guys, throughout uh, the takeoff and landing evolutions. For waypoint navigation, we have our uh, waypoint uh, nav for the different flights. So the cap and strike cap, we've got your waypoints on the left-hand column. Uh, F1 nav, we've got uh, your waypoints in the center there. And then for the AV8s, we've got a whole bunch of waypoints. So that way we can keep track of which SAM batteries are destroyed and uh, get good BDA on those guys while also keeping track of where our helicopters are, while also keeping track of where our own targets are, while also flying in the hold. So we're going to be pretty busy up there tonight. Apache navigation is down there highlighted in red. Um, so you've got waypoints for your various uh, SAM batteries and then uh, up to you guys, up to your discretion and fuel um, determining whether or not you'll be able to bug out to Sharjah International Airport or if you're just going to land back on the civil ships that you have taken off from. Um, we did load some uh, jet fuel bladders onto those ships, so get refueled onto those ships and then get off the civil ships before the sun comes up. Alternates and divert fields. Almond Air Force Base is a good divert field for sure. Their nav aid is 99 X ray. Um, Abu Dhabi International as well as Dubai International and nice long runways for any damaged aircraft. So uh, if you're damaged, probably go there. Then Liwa Air Base is pretty far to the south, but they have a nice long runway, 10,000 foot runway as well. Uh, Las Comms Procedures. If you end up Nordo for any reason because of aircraft damage or SRS failure, please follow these procedures and failure to do so will result in disciplinary actions. Um, you'll probably end up writing an essay to me, Mr. Spud, uh, about how to use SRS if we do have a Nordo aircraft take off and not divert. Las Comms Divert Field is going to be Liwa Air Force Base. Uh, there are no notums of note today for you guys, so um, just keep that in mind. Uh, we are after hours here, so we are working at closed airports. For our Intel image, we've got Greater Tomb Island here, and we can see that our hijacked tanker is tied up to an oil terminal just off the coast of the small uh, little uh, anchorage, I guess you could say, or a small little uh, uh, harbor here on Greater Tomb Island, and the POL storage is scattered across the airfield here in various blocks of tanks. So we're need to destroy these guys and of course sink and destroy the hijacked tanker as well. So I know a little bit of an abbreviated briefing here, guys, but again, we got to get out there and we got to get this uh, response in to uh, sink this tanker and destroy those tanks and uh, make sure that uh, we do it all before the sun comes up. So uh, let's go ahead and step out to our jets and get started, guys. Um, we'll take any questions from uh, flight leads over the radio so that way we can get going here, guys.
Hitman 1-1, one, one, checking in on 272. Hitman 1-3, reach you, loud and clear. Copy that. Set your intercom to uh, Vox or Hot Mic. Uh, right knee board, uh, there's a sensory dial. Um, tell them to turn that all the way up. Yeah, my master volume was turned all the way down, so I couldn't hear anybody for a while either. Yeah, I think it's a CPG config issue. Sauce on the kill traffic, Hitman 1-1 one, one checking in. Checking in on 272. You're coming over Discord. And Hitman, one flight check-in. Hitman, one three, you still up?
Sauce on the kill traffic. Hitman 1-1 one, one. radio check. Roger. Hitman 1 1 has a green jet. Alright, Hitman 1 1 has a green jet. Radio check, 272. Hitman 1-3 also has green jet and HG-11 clear. Copy that. Hitman 1-2, you up? Copy, I also green jet. Copy that, you guys ready for taxi? Sauce on the kill traffic, flight of three, AV8B is taxiing to runway 16. Inflicting traffic, please advise. Chief, also, I take off my wheel chocks. Copy. Wheel chocks are now removed. One's rolling. Looks like jets are coming out of all the team already. Where's the formation lights knob again in this jet? It's uh, to the right of uh, all of your light switches. Three rolling. Uh, where is that? To the right of light switches? Oh, I see it. Never mind. To the left. I got it. Hitman 2-1, you on this frequency? Copy that. 
Roger that. We're taxing out to runway one six. Do you want us to wait for you guys and you guys nav with us, or do you want to uh, want us to just take off? Uh, disregard last. Uh, that was me one two. Uh, this is uh, Hitman two three. I don't know where two one is. Um, it's not on our flight frequency right now. Um, and we're still missing another person as well. Copy that, Hitman two three. Um, once you guys. Uh get, uh, you know, at least a couple jets, just go ahead and start uh, your taxi roll. Uh, eventually talk to them in Discord, make sure they're on the correct frequencies. All right, Hitman 1 flight, uh, we'll go ahead and go for just standard trail takeoffs. Um, let's go for five second intervals, and uh, we'll just start to head back out towards our cap point. Alpatin traffic, Hitman 11, flight of three, AVAP Harriers taking runway six for a straight out departure. We'll be making a left uh, crosswind departure from the airport. All right, I'm going for it. One's wheels up, come in left towards waypoint two. All between all between traffic, three AVAB Harriers leaving the airspace, Hitman 1-1, one, one, the last call. Three, we're up. Alrighty guys, push uh, 305 on the primary. Travel right, red crown. We let them clear radar contact. Alpha check, bullseye, one nine one ninety eight. Red Crown, Scorpion, two one and flight two ship, box sixteen, checking in as Fred. Uh, one uh, one nine or seven for nine nine. Hey, fair enough, line directly point two. Crown Hitman 1 1, flight of 3 AV8s, checking in as frag. Hitman 1 1, Red Crown, I'm going clear, radar of contact. Bull check 196 115. Bull check, good for Hitman 1 1. Scorpion 1-1, one, one, 
Hitman one two one three. Uh, do you want me to anchor somewhere here for you guys to catch up? Uh, two has no eyes on one. Copy that. Three is about two miles behind. Two. Red Crown. Uh, uh, Red Crown one. Check very in. slow. Check and make sure that uh, you got your nozzles pointed full back. Assassin 71, Red Crown, have you loud and clear, stand by? Yeah, that was it. My nozzles were partially down, didn't realize. 71. I'm going nice and slow for you guys to catch up. I'm only doing about 250 indicated. Assassin, Rick Corral, I have a check in with you. I, uh, I keep I have eyes on you now. Copy. Sorry, repeat for Assassin 71. Assassin 71, Rick Corral, does I check? Check 10128. Assassin 72, Hitman 11, you on this frequency? Uh, Assassin 72, go ahead and uh, orbit at your uh, uh, launch ships for the moment, just so that way we can get our cap on station before you guys push the targets. Uh, copy that, returning to the boat. kind of funny is the HUD actually looks better through the NVGs. Hitman 1-1's leveling off at uh, flight level 190. Group 
26, 25,000, tracking north, suspect, second group, group, bullseye, 018, 41, 25,000, tracking north, suspect. I copy that, uh, red ground, uh, permission to, uh, interdict, uh, secondary flight, uh, 018, 41, at, uh, 2,500 Negative, negative. They're not showing hostile intent. Do not engage. Stay at your cap station. Red Crown, Hitman 1-1, one, one, interrogative. Go for it, Crown. Are those uh, two cap flights, are those the cap flights that were on the intel report? Hitman 1-1, one, one, Red Crown, and a -Fro. I sped up a bit, are you guys uh, still on trail? Currently at 300 indicated. Copy. Valkyrie 1-1, one, one, Hitman 1-1. One, one. What's your current position? Uh, Hitman 1-1, one, one, uh, Valkyrie 1-1, one, one. we are, uh, Copy that, Valkyrie 1-1. One, one. Assassin Flight, Catamaran, Catamaran, Catamaran. Assassin Flight copies Catamaran, pushing. Red Crown, Echoes, Catamaran. Red Crown, Scorpion 2-1, uh, we're on station. Uh, request a low altitude block if available. Uh, we're struggling here. I've got eyes on you now. Scorpion 2, Red Crown, copy. You got the tanker below you at 18,000. I can't seem to get the flare to pop it on my HUD, sadly. Uh, do you have your flare turned on? It's sensor control switch to press long. Cap, bulls 191, yeah, I've been pressing it, and I am on night mode on the HUD, and it's not, just not really clear. Red Crown, have you clear radar contact? Try adjusting your brightness and contrast knobs a little bit. I had to play with it a little bit to be able to see it. Red Crown, 
Hitman 1-1 one, one has nails at 15. Get your uh, laser codes set. We'll go to one seven point five. Right now. One, this is three. What's your speed? Currently at two eighty five. I'll speed it up. Sorry about that. Sorry I keep shaking you guys, I'm just trying to concentrate on the uh, bigger picture here. left in the cap station, heading back to waypoint 2. I'm going to try and keep her right at 300 indicated for you guys. my targeting pod on the SA-2 site that's at uh, Greater Tomb. Mm -hmm. 
Visual team. Visual three. Red Crown Assassin seven one. We have two helicopter helicopters off of Lesser Ton. Are they uh, civilian or can you identify? Assassin 7 1, Hitman 1 1. Are the helicopters showing hostile intent towards you guys? Uh, negative. They just seem to be hovering in formation off the island about 15 miles. Copy that. They're probably keeping an eye on you. Uh, do not engage for now. Copy that. We'll not engage. Slight right for the wind correction. Uh, Hitman 2, if you could get your targeting pod onto the Hawk battery at uh, Abu Musa Island, that would be ideal. Copy that. That's going to be waypoint 9 for you. If you could get your targeting pod onto the SA-3 battery on uh, Lesser Tomb, that would be helpful. Confirm waypoint? Stand by. Coming left for uh, waypoint 3. Uh, two has overtaken one, so I'll drop altitude a little and slow down to catch up.
Roger. I'm trying to just hold uh, right at 300 indicated. And three, that lesser two, I say three battery should be your waypoint 11. Three copies. Red Crown, Hitman 1-1. One, one. Hitman 1-1, one, one, Red Crown, go ahead. Any change in disposition of those cap flights? Hitman 1-1, one, one, Red Crown, at negative. Both groups capping, currently tracking at north. Copy that. Any idea what aircraft type they are? We're currently getting mails from 15s and F-4s. that Assassin 7-1. Uh, you're cleared to engage both SA-2s once all helicopters are in position. Copy that. We'll engage both. Rolling out. Roger that. Assassin 7-1, Hitman 1-1 one, one has eyes on those hips. They appear to just be flying around. Any change in what they're doing with you? They seem to just be transiting the lesser tone. Copy. that we're direct uh, waypoint three on the 190 radial about 10 miles out hitman 2-1 hitman 1-1 one, one. what's your altitude block you're flying at Firm, what's your altitude block? We uh, just passed right over us. We're down here at uh, 190. Yeah, we're at 195. We 
Yeah, we had 500 foot. Roger. Coming left, waypoint two. Assassin 7 1, Hitman 1 1. Uh, confirm that you see two SA 2 sites on Greater Tomb. I've only got one SA 2 site on Greater Tomb. Yeah, I think my CPG is confirming it right now, but we believe there's only one track radar. Copy that. I see numerous AAA radars. Maybe it might be I've got a better angle on it. Yeah, it seems like they're the fire cans that we're seeing. Copy that. And Hitman 1-1 one, one for Assassin 7-1 again. What's the ETA until all your helicopters are in position? We're just closing to range right now. I'll advise once we fire. Bonds to interrogative. Go. Uh, do we need to maintain our uh, targeting pods on the SAM site? Uh, a firm, if you could, that way we can make sure that they're taken out before we push. That way I don't have to hop back and forth between all the different SAM sites. Copy that. Dubai sure is pretty at night. Yeah, there's some amazing lightning going on now. Thank God there's an autopilot in the Harrier. Time. Yeah. At least on these uh, straight legs for the hold here, I'm uh, able to just pop the uh, altitude hold on and just make it as smooth as possible for you. Yeah. Is this thing fly by wire? It doesn't really feel like. No, it's not fly by wire. Oh, that explains it. Good old hydraulics. Yeah, the, the autopilot can mess with your trim if you don't know how to work with it. Okay, two has visual re-establishing formation. Uh, visual on you two. You're clear to rejoin. Alright, we're going to be rolling out to uh, roughly about 180 on the heading for uh, this leg. Uh, 290 indicated. Just trying to conserve and fuel as much as possible. Copy that, 
gonna swap in between you one and three. Hey, bro. Two and three, I don't see you anymore. You guys still back there? Hey, Phil, I just uh, got away from for you giving a space for two. Gotcha. Two is still attempting to rejoin, but also trying to fix my targeting pod on the off site. Gotcha. Assassin 7 1 Hitman 1 1, you're cleared to engage those radars as soon as you're in position. Hitman 1 1, Assassin 7 1 copies, we're standing by for Assassin 7 4 to be in range. Copy that. Uh, does he have an ETA on when he'll be there? Heading back up north. They're 9 point kilometers point. out, should be momentarily. Copy that, thank you. Uh, two and three, what's your fuel state? Three is seven point three. Two seven point seven. Roger. Scorpion 1-1, one, one, Scorpion 2-1, Hitman 1-1. One, one. Scorpion 2-1. Roger that. Uh, your target area is most likely, if you're needed, is most likely going to be in the Greater Tomb area. Just want to keep you updated on that. Copy. Uh, uh, keep Greater Tomb in mind. Scorpion 2-1. Radio bump bump bump. Uh, 
Assassin flight, rifle all targets. Hitman flights, Nautilus, Nautilus, Nautilus. Hitman 2 1, copies, push waypoint. Red Crown, Echoes, Nautilus. One, 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 three, visual on impact on SC3. Copy that. Assassin helicopters, stay on station in case we have more targets for you. Assassin one, 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 three, three, also three, visual on black, fire, uh, firing Copy. at this moment. Two reports, uh, impact on the Hawk site. Saddled on your right wing. They are panicking. There is plenty of AAA going off. Watch it. A firm got visual on it. Hitman flights uh, looks got visual confirmation. The fan song on Greater Tomb is done. One one, watch out for traffic there. Copy that. All right, Hitman, uh, fence in. Leave your lights on. Fence in, lights on. That one's fence, state seven six. Three seven six, state seven point zero. Assassin seven one, Hitman one one. Is that triple A? Is it guided or is they just firing ballistically? Copy that. Assassin 72, Hitman 11. One, one. I don't know if you guys can see it, but uh, there's AAA firing everywhere down there. Uh, strike, this is uh, Assassin 73. We seem to have lost contact with 71 and 72. Radar, uh, Triple A seems to be radar guided. Copy. Uh, 72 is still up. We just had a radio issue. Part of that Assassin 72. Is that uh, Triple A fire you guys are taking? That's guide. Is that guided or are they just firing? It seems guided to me. Copy. Yeah. There's some kind of radar still up on Lesser Tune. Copy that. If you guys are able to take out any of those fire cans uh, without putting yourselves in undue danger, go ahead and go for it. Assassin 7-3. Seems like the Hawk is still on the air. You guys able to keep engaging those radars? We are at 3 the radar is engaging the 4th at the moment. 
Copy that. All right, uh, two, three, go ahead and get your targeting pod on the ship. Push it up. Let's go for about 350 indicated. Hitman flight, red crown, you got Texaco with Valkyrie off your nose, 11 miles, co up 18,000 feet. Hitman 1 1's look for traffic. Roger, you want to check in with the red crown real quick? One's at 350. Two, one, and flight. I'll one, I'm here. I'll watch out. 2,000 feet, tracking west. Lights back on. I'm at uh, 194. Copy that, 194. Red Crown, uh, Dog 311. Uh, did you have any information for us? Dog 311, Red Crown negative, that's for about 3 currently on Texaco tracking across the targets. Uh, I've got uh, visual on traffic high at our, uh, our two o'clock. So has visual on traffic. Three so eyes on left picture, four ship launching out of Kish. Valkyrie 1-1, one, one. Valkyrie 2-1, one. Spinnaker, Spinnaker, Spinnaker on that uh, flight out of Kish. Go ahead and see if they have hostile intent. Hitman 1-1, one, one, uh, Valkyrie 1-1, one, one. copy all. Uh, we're gonna go with you did. Coming left uh, towards the target area here. <laughs> And two as visual on one. Copy that. Uh, do you guys want me to drop and, or, and you guys observe the ship, or do you want me to uh, let you guys go ahead and drop and then I'll observe? 26948, tracking southeast, unknown. Uh, your choice. Uh, my fuel state is 6.8. Copy okay, that. Wow, I can see the fucking muzzle flashes from the AAA down there on the island. Red Crown, copy all, uh, copy one, one. Uh, two, uh, is one interrogative. Go for it. Uh, that's what Are we dropping both bombs simultaneously? Uh, I'm gonna drop uh, both of them, again. and, uh, you guys observe the impacts, and we'll see if we sunk the ship or not. Copy that. Two will observe. Flight red crown. Say We had to go through some troubleshooting, but now almost done. Thank you. Copy two flight red crown. You have a unknown air contact. Raw two nine eight twenty five hot. Two nine eight for twenty twenty knot. Uh Roger two nine eight for Roger two two red crown unknown group Raw two eight two twenty eight miles five thousand feet. Red crown, what's the uh 
ground shear of that flight. The ground showing altitude 7,000 feet. Copy. Oh, what do you want us to do about it? Hey, you guys getting it locked up by something? There's impacts, small impacts, looks like nothing happened to shoot. Getting back to the uh, east here, so that way I can get a good observation on the uh, ship once you drop. Scorpion. Hitman 1 1. Scorpion flight, mainsail, mainsail, mainsail. Your target is POL storage tanks at Greater Tomb Air Base. Scorpion 1 1 copy. Scorpion 1 1, a red crayon of unknown contact. Bullseye 238, 72 miles, 5 miles just north of you. Scorpion 2 1 copies. Alright, shit's Probably smoking. Two, one, red crane. Air contact. I got visual on the contact, Fokker 2. I don't know what it is, but it looks like it has two engines. It's burning. Uh, two might be able to re engage at double rail and engage. Flight, a red crown, a new group. Bullseye 2, 4, 3, 34, 60,000. Hot. Copy Best that. Book. One's got visual. Uh, Red Crab, be advised, uh, we're trying to uh, hold fire for a few hours. We're very close to our friendlies for mission to Copy. fire. Fire, we're fired Red Crown and fire on this fire upon. Fire 3 one, one copy. Scorpion 2 1, Snoopy. Bearing 0 4 5 for 2 miles at 20,000, MiG-21. Break, 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 this dude just shot a music on us. Valkyrie 1-3, merge with the MiG-21. We have uh, MiG-21s on our rear. Go ahead and shoot him down. One, uh, 
that, you're clear to engage. Alright, one's red on the Red Crown, was that make 21? Say again for Red Crown. Red Crown, Scorpion, 1, 2, was that make 21 just down? Hey, from Rick is down. Rick, Rick, Hitman, one one, Rick Crown. Hitman, one one. Hitman, one one, Rick Crown. Recommend all air contacts from enemy territory be declared hostile. Copy that. Uh, are those MiG twenty ones all down? Alright, Red Crown, Hitman 1-1. One, one. Uh, all aircraft south of the mainland are declared hostile. Copy. Red Crown, I have a hostile group merged with Valkyrie 1-2. Second hostile group merged with Valkyrie 1-3. Third hostile group, Bra 2-3-7-42. Tracking towards Scorpion 1. Hitman 1 through Payboy. Valkyrie 2, Red Crown, safe. Good impasse. Uh, getting away from the bridge. Valkyrie 2 1. Red Crown, Cans locking somebody up. Careful. Tool rejoin. Copy that. I'm gonna get BDA on these uh, POL tanks. Yeah, those are the fire cans. Uh, what do you guys think? Did that ship sunk? Obviously it's damaged. Is it resting on the bottom? Uh, let me check. Uh, if we can get a side profile of the hull, we might be able to see if, uh, if it's uh, low in the water. Copy that. Assassin 7-3's got two mid 21 spike on our six. Assassin flights, you're cleared to egress the target area. Assassin copies. Okay, yep, got it. Red Crown, Hitman 1-1, one, one. what's the picture on those uh, MiGs? Hitman 1-1, one, one. Red Crown, two groups. Group 205 still merged with the Valkyrie 1 1. Group 243 tracking northwest hostile. Copy that. And then 1 1 with Crown, third hostile group still merged with Valkyrie flight. Roger that, it's Valkyrie taking losses. Red Crown, unable to determine, Valkyrie 2 flight is verbal. 
Copy. Uh, to our ports, the ship, the tanker, seems to be very low on the water, probably rested on the seabed right now. One confirms that. Scorpion 1-1, one, one, Scorpion 2-1, Hitman 1-1. One, one. What's your ETA to the target area? Scorpion 2-1 is about three minutes out, but we're sneaking away through a furball. Copy that. Scorpion 2-1 confirms target is PLL at Greater Ton. That's your target. Ship is sunk. indicated. I were just staying out here to get BDA on the uh, POL. Hitman 1-1. One, one. That was Cap Flight's uh, move south. Hitman 1-1, one, one, Rick Brown. They are currently tracking south, but that is still their orbiting area. They have not pushed farther south. Copy that. If they uh, go feet wet, let us know. Spike. You guys got that MiG-21 spike? Clear yeah, for Copy that. Lights off. Scorpion 1-2 is 
Copy that. You're clear to egress, Scorpion. Copy that. Just uh, waiting on my number two. That Red Crown Hitman 1-1 one one just got nails, MiG-21. Uh, are they still out here in the area? Low on gas. Red Crown, Scorpion 1-2, with 2 9 m request permission to engage. Uh, tour has visual, uh, same speed. Scorpion, Red Crown, that's right, tour has visual on 1. 350. Uh, is that true or indicated? Indicated. are back on for you. Red Crown, picture clean with the exception of the two capping over the return. Copy. Uh, we don't have any bombs left, correct? Good. Let's go ahead and uh, uh, head off station here. We have uh, four air to air missiles. I'm oh, sorry. Um, we have sufficient air to air weaponry, uh, but we are being at this time. That's the tank is 49. 40 miles. All right. Yeah, find the right to uh, waypoint. GTA to seven. Uh, 15 minutes. Red Crown Hitman 1-1. One, one. It's got good BDA on the POL and the hijacked tanker. Uh, we're egressing the area. All flights are cleared out of the target area. Red Crown Scorpion 1-1, one, one, uh, Winchester. Red Crown, copies all, egress and south. Scorpion flight, copies, egressing south. I'm just trying to stay out of the way of that triple A down there. Scorpion 2 1 and flight egressing south. Uh, good BDA. We are Dakota. Right, Crown. Man, those AAA batteries sure killed a whole lot of fish and birds. They have to make the cord out of the amount of bullets they put on the air. <laughs> if we don't use this many bullets, we won't get enough bullets next year.
Uh, you guys have the fuel for us to push it up to about 400 knots. Really? Uh, two fuel is one one two. Your flight is three four, three four three seven miles down your left side. I'm just trying to arc wide to uh, air more towards our coastline as opposed to flying directly over the enemy held islands. I'm interested to see the tack view of that fur ball. Seems like they had a hard time. Scorpion, one, two, the ground. Scorpion, one. Scorpion, one, two, the ground is fair to see here in the left hand turn. Right, it's uh, the M1 one, two, on the EW, that's uh, Mirage F1, right? So good combat. Can I confirm? I don't think I've seen it before. I promise. You, if you want to take the lead and lead us in, uh, you can go for it. Copy that, I'll slow it down. Your speed is now 400, is that correct? Yeah, I'm slowing it down to uh, 370 uh, to let you guys catch up. Copy that. Looks like, our, looks like our current track here on this heading of about 205 will keep us along the coastline rather than flying over the island, so I'm just going to keep this heading. down to uh, 18,000. All right, come down to 18,000 for traffic. I think that's a tanker off our left at our 10 o'clock. Still looking for that traffic. One strike lead confirms all aircraft egress. Hey, was that you saddled? Negative, that's three. Copy that, three. Uh, three, you've got the lead.
three, one's cross and under to uh, form up on your left, on your right wing. Big crown, Scorpion 2-1 on in flight, uh, check it out. Scorpion 2-1, what man, copy. form on your left wing. Saddled on three. Valkyrie, one more, Ooh, look at that nice desert camo in the dark. I'm glad you like it. I just remember wind's favor in runway one six. for Hitman 1-1. One, one. Red Crown copies. Yeah, Red Crown, if you've got issues with uh, fighters and fuel, uh, Divert Field might be good as Kassab or uh, Dubai International. No problem.
Copy that. Okay, tool is back and fixed head tracking issues. I'll do that too. Copy that too, we're in a slight descent here coming down. Well, hopefully we didn't just start a big war with our giant neighbor to the north. Pan, 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 pan. It'll be fine. Three, two, one, I just had to climb out. Copy that Valkyrie 2-1, you able to uh, glide to a runway? I'm going to attempt engine restart, but not I'm going to glide to a runway. Copy. Did you want us to uh, come in for a vertical landing, or are we going for just a conventional landing, or...? I'm not 100% familiar with the procedures to vertical landing information. Roger that. So what we'll do is we'll do, like, a case one break, left-hand break over the runway, and uh, basically we'll just have plenty of space. You land towards the end of the runway, I'll land in the middle, two will land aft at, towards the beginning of the runway. Copy. Okay, two switching over to the right of one. Roger. That's a lot of very dark water. Don't plow us into the water tree. <laughs> Alright, turn in left. Engine relight was unsuccessful. I'm gonna have emergency landing at Alta front. Copy that. Hitman, we need to, uh, Hitman Flight, we need to push, uh, 278 on primary. Copy. Two. Can say speed? 400. Three, that's our field right down there at about our uh, 1130. You see it? Affirm. Sasol Nikhil traffic, flight of three AVAPs inbound for the overhead runway 16. We're on left turn, right? Affirm. 
you see the correct runway? Yeah, I know. We're a little bit right from it. Yep. And we're a bit high for the overhead as well. in the break. Are you making a conventional landing? Negative, I'm going to the end for a vertical one. Copy.
Well, that wasn't my best landing, that's for sure. I haven't flown the Harrier in forever, so that's my excuse. I think I think I was a little bit heavy. I feel like I almost ruined my engine. <laughs> oh yeah, I was definitely heavy. My crew chief is gonna have a word with me about blowing the engine out. Ah, uh, same. Yeah, I think I might have stepped on you. Um, I was. I said that the the crew chief is gonna love me. Oh, I didn't hear that part. <laughs> 